It's time to multiply. Your kid is in school and they're really enjoying math and they're getting to this thing that you can remember to either know to love or you know to hate it. Multiplication. But it doesn't have to be so difficult. Now, I will tell you this, multiplication or the process of teaching it is not how we thought it was, where it was just row memorization, three times three is nine just because. Now there's more conceptual idea or a conceptually needed to know fact about multiplication. And what I mean by that is understanding what is multiplication? What is it exactly? What does it mean it's time to finally multiply? Well, I'm going to show you how to teach this process in a, in a quick manner with the ways called grouping. Now, as you can see, multiplication is the process of adding equal groups. Multiplication is adding three plus three plus three plus three, which is basically three times four, which equals 12. Now, when you're multiplying using equal groups, you're saying that you have the exact amount in each group. And so you're going to add up each group and the number that's in each group. As you see in this demonstration right here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's understandable. We know that we have eight, but how do we teach it in groups? Well, we can have one, two, three, four. So we have one, two, three, four, groups of two. So we have four groups in each group. There's two. And this shows that four times two equals eight. Now it's an easy process for someone like you and I, but how do you actually teach it? Well, I'll show you right here using real life and real world things because you want to make sure math is actually understood to be in the world. A lot of times I talk to my kids and I say, how many of you have used, used math outside of class? And not many of them can understand it. So you want to bring those situations that allow your child to actually learn math in the real world. And so they can take that concept and then add a procedure to it. Now, as you see here in the figure, we have number of groups, times the number of objects in each group, and that equals the product, which in fact is the answer. So for the first one, we see that there are one, two, three apples on each plate. All right, so that's understandable. But first, let's count the number of groups. So we're gonna count the number of plates here. So we have one, two, three, four. So we have four plates. So in this first one right here, of number of groups, we have four. All right. Now let's count the number of apples in each plate. And these are some of the words you want to use with your child. When you and you and your child are sitting there going through this process, you want to use, all right, how many groups do we have and how many objects do we have in each group? So to continue with the apples, we have one, two, three in this one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we have four, groups, I'll try to underline it here, four groups, and we have three apples in each group. So that gives us a total of, if you wanna let your child go ahead and practice this process, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Therefore, four times three equals 12. Now. This will be an interesting process because your child will really enjoy putting these objects in groups. However, make sure that they are focusing on that one-to-one -one correlate, one-to-one -one correspondence. So they're, they're counting each and every individual object. A lot of times I see children try to rush through this process and they may say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And, and they really, they, they haven't taken their time. Make sure your child really takes their time. Now in the second problem, you see now our number of groups per se is not necessarily groups, but they're dogs. So if we looked at these dogs and we can have different objects based on these dogs, but I'm gonna work on the legs, right? So I have one, two, three dogs. So that would be three different groups. Now, how many legs does each dog have? Well, luckily I can see them all and see that they all have four legs. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, 
and this is basically the inverse of the top problem. But we have three dogs. Each dog has four legs. Therefore, if I was asked how many legs do they have in all, I would say three times four or three groups of four. And again, that equals 12. So again, you see this sort of process of being able to take a specific object and, and group it. In the second instance, it was the legs. Now, how does this correlate to actually understanding multiplication in math? Now make sure again, you go through that first process of actually showing them real world information. Show them, allow them to use Cheerios, allow them to use a uh, different type of candy if you're into, allow them to use apples and actually manipulate plates and different things like that. And that'll give them a good understanding of the concept of multiplication. But then you wanna bring them to this level where they can see the actual math part and be able to use that and, and do that using groups. So in the first problem, I see I have two times six. Now two, again, is the number of groups and six is the number of objects in each group. For this process, I'm just gonna do circles. So I see two groups of six. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I have another group, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, this is the part where I say, make sure your child is really taking their time to count this. So I count and I see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So two times six equals 12. It's something about those 12s today. All right, the next one, five groups of three. One, two, three, one group, four, five, six, two groups, seven, eight, nine, three groups, 11, or 10, 11, 12, four groups, 13, 14, 15. Now I know I did that counting and saying the groups out loud, but make sure your child takes their time and says, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. So they actually understand that. And then I count it out loud. So now you know you have five times three equals 15 after I go back and count it. The last one, I have three groups of three. One, two, three, one group. One, two, three, two groups. One, two, three, three groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Now, what I like about grouping and, and using groups is that you're taking something that your child already knows. They know how to count and you're building on that. They know how to put things in groups and they know how to count. And so you're basically using their already acquired understanding or level of information and you're just gaining to it. You're just adding to it. So then they get to a point where it's like, I know how to multiply. I can put things in groups, get them to that point and you'll really see them blossom. Thank you for joining me on my learning block. Keep learning with me.